here is my workspace. Um, this is my picture that is going to be inspiring us for this lesson. If you need a copy of this picture, you can pull one up off the internet just searching Hokusai's Great Wave. Um, for this lesson, I'm going to be using some watercolor and oil pastel, but please use whatever it is that you have available, whether that be crayons, markers, color pencils, a combination of these is excellent too, like crayon and actually the marker. I'm going to show a technique where you can use those similar to watercolor and oil pastel. So I'm going to keep my picture close to me and my workspace so that I can see it as I am working. That's going to help me always. When I'm drawing something, I always want to use observation. So here is my paper. It is going to be long landscape so I can get that landscape in of that ocean with that great wave. I'm going to start down in the foreground. That's in the front of my picture because there's lots of overlapping going on with this picture. I see and I see a line that's curving down, kind of like the first part of that trough of that wave that's coming down in the um, foreground. And then there's some men on boats, but I'm not gonna put the men on their boats quite yet. Then I'm gonna start to create that big barrel of that wave. So I'm gonna kind of take my line and curve it around like a C. So kind of like a really curly C, almost like a spiral, but not quite. Then I'm gonna take from the end of my C, I'm gonna come back towards, oh, I went off my paper, is that okay? Absolutely, this is a great wave. So if it falls off my paper, that's absolutely fine. I'm just gonna kind of pretend like I'm continuing that line and then go down off the back. So that really big curl of that wave. Now I'm looking at this one, I see a lot of white water. I see some lines in here. I might just draw a few of them to kind of show me. I might even thicken this wave up a little bit and add another line here. All right, and then, you know, the other part that was really, I'm gonna do some white water lines here. The other part that's really important is where this inspiration came from, which was Hokusai's 36 views of Mount Fuji. So we're gonna add in one more horizon line and then add in our volcano, our Mount Fuji in the background as well. All right, so there's my picture. I've got my foreground where I've got my trough of my wave. I've got my middle ground, which has the curl and the barrel of my wave. And then I've got my background with my Mount Fuji and a little bit of sky space there as well. Okay, first I'm gonna start with my oil pastels. And you know, I'm not gonna color this all with oil pastel, but I'm really just gonna use these as a way to trace over some of my lines so that those are gonna be able to be seen more clearly once I do start to paint and give a little definition to my wave. And I'm just gonna add a few accent lines here. Oh, I'm gonna get some good movement of this ocean and in the back too. Okay, um, then I think I'm going to use a light blue also. Now, if you don't have oil pastel, that is okay. Remember, you can use crayons if you want, and you can do your crayon with this same type of line. Okay, then I really like what I call art magic. Art magic is, you know, because our uh, materials they work with each other or they work with each other or they can work against each other. And sometimes oil pastel and watercolor work against each other. So I'm gonna use my white oil pastel to make all that white water in my wave. And I might even just do a little bit. Ooh, see how it mixes? I kinda like that. That's fun. All right, let me do a couple in here. Now, Mount Fuji is a dormant volcano, which means it is no longer active. So it really isn't quite you know, angry and spitting lava out. So I'm just gonna put a little snow cap on top of it. And I think I'm gonna make it purple because it's kind of far in the distance. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna color this whole thing purple then. All right, now if there's anything else that you want detail, if you wanna add a boat, you can add a boat. If you wanna add a sun, add a sun. Clouds, whatever you wanna do in your picture, that is totally up to you now. 
Now, I'm gonna do my watercolors. So I'm gonna use my watercolors to fill in the rest of my picture. And I am gonna get my brush wet first because water makes the color. And I got my watercolor set here. Um, I got this watercolor set off of Amazon. It was a really good buy. Um, I can link it in my in the description of this video if there's something maybe you're interested in getting as well. It's got a whole variety of colors and all my colors are set up really well so they're like next to each other. So I know, hey, if I use this light blue and this dark blue, of course those are gonna mix really well together. Or make sure I wash my brush out really well before I get a new color. If I use some of this green, which is nearby, it'll kind of, it'll mix well also. All right, ooh, look at that. I can still see my white of my oil pastel, even though I'm covering it with the watercolor now, just really gently. Hmm, as I'm doing this, I'm kind of thinking ahead and I'm thinking about what I wanna do in my sky. You know, typically a sky is blue, but this uh, wave is blue. So I don't know if that's gonna be such a great idea. Maybe I'm gonna do a sunset. I think that'll look really nice against the blue of my ocean. Remember, the more water I use, the better my paint is going to spread. There we go. All right, let me wash that brush really well because I'm about to switch over to some orange. I don't want that to get all muddy with my I'm gonna do my little sun around Mount Fuji. Kind of gives it a little extra emphasis as well. Mm hey, -hmm. buns. My dog has just moved from one room, one side of the room to the other. If you were wondering what that little click noise was of his paws. Okay, let's see. Um, I don't like that pink as much as I thought I would. Let's switch over to some yellow. You know what, that's the great thing about warm colors is that they will kind of blend with each other nicely. Oh, that's much better. And so there, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll come back and paint that later. Ooh, look how I use my brush kind of nice and softly. You know, softly is the key word there because if I'm too hard with it, it's gonna rip my paper, but softly kind of giving it a nice little back and forth with some water. I don't really even need paint sometimes. I just need a little extra water, but I've got to be gentle because I don't want to rip my paper. Let's get some more of this guy over here. Ooh, I'm liking this a lot. Oh, this looks fantastic. Okay. Mix a little bit more over here. Excellent. All right. And there is my wave. Beautiful. Now, I promised you another technique. So, if you don't have the watercolors in the oil pastels, you can use your crayons and your markers similarly. So, if I were to draw my lines like I did before for my wave, and I can use the white um, crayon as well, I didn't get my white crayon out, so I'm not going to. Now this is just a small, quick little sketch. Rough drawing, rough drawing. Okay, now, if I use my water uh, washable markers, that's important. If this is a, if you ha are using a Sharpie or something like that, it is not going to work the same. So I can go in and I can make some lines with my marker now. and then use my brush and look how it starts to blend or move across my paper. So water washable marker, you can create and do a water color with it. See how it starts to blend? Again, you don't wanna be really rough with your brush don't scrub too hard or that paper is going to rip. And then you're gonna have to let this dry really well too. Oh, I think I might be using too much water, but I'm getting some good results. Okay, so 
there you go. No uh, oil and pastel, that is fine. Use yourself some markers and make it your own watercolor. I hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson and I cannot wait to see some of your results.